right morning you all how are you all doing happy monday this is your girl shan like i say every week i hope and pray that you all had an amazing relaxing weekend listen we need to start getting back to learning how to relax so for everybody that is coming in good morning good morning good morning you know i'm gonna say this real quick something i didn't even think about um, for those of you who are listening via our Instagram or YouTube channel, when you hear me say good morning to people, that's because I go live from Facebook. And so I go live from Facebook and then what happens is our team will take and put everything on all the other social media platforms. So if you ever want to, you know, see the comments and all those things that are said, good morning, everybody coming in, um, all those things that are said, then you know, Facebook. And then you all who's been rocking with me for some time, like I've been doing lives, shoot, for probably about mm, seven years, I think, even before radio, our radio show, I was doing lives and actually that's what I think, got, long story short. Anyway, so good morning, good morning, everybody coming in. I'm going to go ahead and go back and give, you know, thank y'all for joining my little messages and everything. But let me go ahead and do our church announcements as I call it. Marriage Mondays with the Kings, join us tonight at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. Let me tell y'all what we're going to be talking about. Our topic is going to be security in marriage. Everyone shouldn't have access. Come on, somebody. Ooh, security in marriage. Everyone shouldn't have access. And this is the question of the week. Something to think about. And y'all can drop y'all comments too or whatever y'all think. Why is it that couples give people access to their marriage that means them no good versus those who desire to see them succeed? Again, that's going to be tonight, Marriage Mondays with the Kings at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time on KRGN 98.5 FM, The Rock. So if you want to listen in, go to our website, marriagemondayswiththekings.com. Click on the Listen Here tab. We have... Um, KRGN, you can click on that if you want to listen, if you are outside the listening area. So if you want to listen on that, good morning, good morning. Um, we also have um, podcasts, all kind of different platforms. So however you want to listen, it's all on our website, marriagemondayswiththekings.com and go on the listen here tab. Now let me go ahead and kind of get into, you know, because I explained to y'all last week, sometime I can say good morning to everybody that's coming in. Sometime I ain't got the time to do that. This is one of those times or whatever. <laughs> but with that being said, let me go ahead and kind of talk about something that's really been on my heart. I just don't understand why people would say this in marriage or relationship. And I've even heard people say things like this to their children. And what things are is this. How are you in a marriage? And I've heard people say this and I'm just like, you trifling. Y'all know me, your girl gonna be real. But how do you tell your spouse or the person that you're in a relationship with, oh, if you ever decide to leave me, ain't nobody else going to want you. Don't nobody want you with all these children. Um, All these negative comments. This is my question because I've really been pondering on this thing. What makes you think you the best thing since sliced bread? Now, I ain't trying to come for nobody early on a Monday morning. But what I don't understand is how do people form such negative words out of their mouth? That's something that I've been just really thinking on. How do you form those words to say that to your spouse or someone that you say that you love? How do you say that, oh, if you ever try to leave me, you ain't going to find no nobody any better than me? Okay, really? But you treat me like this? You're saying these type of words? Are you saying that because you desire for me to stay here in this dysfunctional situation? Because see, we need to get back to the scriptures. When it comes to certain situations, life and death is in the power of the tongue. You can draw a, you can draw a person in with your kind words than being negative. So how is this going to further help your marriage get better if you're speaking such ignorance, whether that be the husband or the wife? Because um, I can't say that this is always men. I'm going to be honest. It's not always men. You know what I'm saying? Women, let's be real, sis. You know, our words is just as trifling as some of, these, some of these men out here. So I'm not coming for anybody on this morning. I'm just wondering, and that's what I've been kind of pondering on. Like, where does this foolishness come from? Where does it come from? Of course, you know, by trade, being in the field that I work in, I tend to dig deeper than just surface level. I've always, even before coming into this field um, that me and my husband are in, I've always tend to think deeper. Like, where does that come from? You know where I think it come from? And y'all drop it where y'all think it come from. It come from pride. 
That's where it comes from. It comes from pride. It comes from nine times out of 10, that individual grew up in a dysfunctional home. That individual heard these things being said, you know what I'm saying? In a dysfunctional home or a dysfunctional environment. And you brought this foolishness into your marriage. And that's what I don't understand. But then... Let me talk to the sisters real quick because y'all know I speak to what I most commonly see. Us sisters, ladies, I'm going to need y'all to quit thinking that y'all had a power to heal these men. We don't. And, and the more that we keep thinking that as women, the more that we're going to allow ourselves to get hurt. Because see, this is what I've, when I think about brokenness, and that's the, the next thing I was going to say, the individual who speaks this kind of things is broken. You are a broken individual who needs to go get some help, okay? And the reason why I say that is this. Because anybody who's actually healed from some of the traumatic, dysfunctional things that they have grew up in will not speak these things out of their mouth. And so what you do is because you don't want to deal with your own individual brokenness, what you do is you cast that and or project. Remember me talking about projection not too long ago in one of my lives. You project that onto your husband. You project that onto your wife and you make them the problem. Baby, they're not the problem. You the problem, okay? So the reason why, I know y'all like, dang, Shan, but usually when it comes to relationships and I was like, no, no, no. Listen, if you've been with your girl, Shan, your sis, your cousin for a while, your play cousin for a while, you know I'm going to be speaking straight up truth. And so as I look at the different variations, myself and my husband and my God allows us to go deeper in things that are hindering marriages, brokenness is hindering marriages i'm telling you for those of y'all who've read the book for those of y'all who read the book brokenness is hindering marriages brokenness is hindering relationships and so let me go ahead and knock on let me knock on another door okay so let's talk about everybody want to be cutting everybody off baby you might be needing to cut yourself off okay and i don't mean in harming yourself when i say that because you may be the problem it may not be everyone else around you but one thing i do know is even if you are broken in your marriage or you wonder why i can't find a solid relationship and see this is the thing you will have people tell singles or those who have divorced before you get into another relationship you got to make sure um, that you are on the up and up. You got to make sure that you know all your, your credit is good. You got to make sure that, no, 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 no. People can tell you all this stuff that they want to. You got to make sure you check this block, that block, that block. Girl, maybe you want to lose some some weight. Oh, bro, maybe you want to make a little bit of more money and, you know, get your game up and all this other kind of stuff like that. No, what I'm going to suggest is heal from your brokenness. If you have just went through a divorce or you have been divorced and you have now, now I'm not speaking, you know what I'm saying? I can't speak to that because I haven't been through a divorce, but what I'm going to share as words of encouragement is this, grieve that divorce. And those who know, know what I'm talking about. Take the time to grieve that divorce because what happens is you take your brokenness from that broken marriage and you go and jump into another relationship and you go and try to make that person feel like the best thing since sliced bread that, oh, baby, I could do this for you. Oh, I could cook like this for you, daddy, you know, all these other kind of stuff like that. And you are masking your brokenness to get you somebody else so you won't be lonely at night to marry you somebody else so you won't be sitting up here lonely by yourself. And the problem is that brokenness is going to manifest itself in that other relationship, in that marriage. So if you're going to do anything and work on doing anything, number one, grieve that relationship, that marriage that you just left. Uh, no, number one, I would suggest you to see God and say, God, show me things that need to change. God, show me the things that I need to heal from. Go before the Lord. That's number one. I would highly suggest that. Get into your prayer closet. Pray in your car. I don't care what you do. And ask God to reveal you, reveal to you the things that you need to heal from when it comes to being broken. For those of you who are single and you haven't even got married yet, uh, maybe you desire to get married deep down within, but you, oh, uh, marriage don't work. No, baby, I ain't going to say marriage don't work. I'm not going to say marriage don't work. I, I can't say that because that's what me and my husband do. We advocate for marriage. Marriage do work if you work it. Come on, somebody. But anywho, with that being said, 
Ask God if you're in your single state right now. God, show me some of the things that need to be healed. God, show me um, some of the dysfunction that I had in my home growing up. Even if you think it was a perfect home, I'm telling you, there is probably some things that you carry a trait within you that you are ready to carry into a relationship and don't even realize it. Some individuals say, like if your husband or your wife asks you, why do you do that? Like, why do you speak such negativity, for example? Um, I don't like a person, me personally, I don't like speaking negativity. I don't. I do not. Um, and that was some of the things me and my husband had as a conversation. Y'all know I always, we, we both transparent about our marriage. No, we're not going to speak no negativity. The word of God says where two or more are gathered in his name, he will be in the midst. And I need God to come to agreement on this thing. So that means the two of us need to be in agreement or whatnot. So anywho, going back to the singles. Um, and those of you who have gotten divorced, those of you who are in a marriage right now, you in a relationship, even if, you know, marriage got its ups and downs and stuff like that. But as God, God, what is it that I need to heal from? And see, you know why people don't do this? Let me go back to what I said earlier. Pride. Your pride. Oh, I'm good. Oh, I'm perfect. Oh, I don't know what you talking about. Oh, that ain't me. And that's me. That is men. Women, we will be as nasty as all get out with our words. Men, you do it too. But men mainly is the one that you are too prideful. You won't go talk to nobody. You won't go seek no counseling. You won't go try to better yourself. You won't go to counseling with your spouse. Nine times out of ten, it's men that won't go to counseling with their spouse. I'm speaking from what I know. Okay. And I'm not talking about, you know what I'm saying? Me and my husband personally, I'm talking about with the field. Some of y'all know what field we in. It's the men. You won't go get no help. You won't go to counseling. You beating your wife down. You talking to her all crazy out the side of your neck. You making it seem like your marriage is good to your homeboy. Oh yeah, we good. We good, shorty. You speaking all these kind of things to your homeboy who don't, who don't mean two cents to your marriage instead of actually taking care of your Jerusalem. Remember I was talking about that last week. Getting your house in order, getting your marriage in order, getting your children in order. Because let me share with you something that I do know. We're talking about generational curses and, oh, I'm going to be the one who breaks the generational curses. Now, that's what I believe. That's what I've been working on. You know what I'm saying? And if that means I got to dig deep and do the work, I'm going to do what I got to do. Because I don't want nothing knowingly and unknowingly to pass down to my children, my, my grandchildren and my future great-great-grandchildren. So with that being said... How can you break generational curses within your generations of all the dysfunctional things that is taking place in your marriage if you're not willing to put your pride aside, dig deep, and, and put in some work? Okay, do the work. I say this all the time. Faith without works is dead. That's scripture. So you can have the faith all you want to, sis, that, oh, my marriage is going to turn around. It's going to do. I'm praying and all that kind of stuff. You can have the faith all you want to, bro. Uh, Well, hopefully my wife will get it together when it ain't your wife. It's you. Okay, it's you that's got the issues. I, I, can we be real on this morning? How we gonna heal if we can't be real? Come on, somebody, coin that. You heard it right here first on Marriage Mornings with the Queen. How can we heal if we don't be real with ourselves? Okay, I want y'all, hey, look, coin it. Y'all heard that here. I got proof. This is recorded. <laughs> so, so with that being said, man, let's get to a place of healing. Let's get to a place of really fixing our own individual brokenness. Before you set a prayer and say the marriage is the fault of your spouse, the issues that y'all got going on, oh, it's her, 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 it's him, him, him. No, examine yourself. And the reason why we don't take the time to examine ourselves and really heal for real is because we don't want to unveil some of the stuff that we've been too busy trying to fake as if everything is all good. But let me tell you, keep fronting if you want to. Keep faking and jaking, like my homegirl say, if you want to. And that stuff is going to manifest itself in some ways. And if it never manifests in your life, baby, it'll manifest in your children. I'm telling you. And I'm not even speaking that into existence in some of you all's lives. I'm speaking truth. I'm not trying to speak negativity. It will manifest itself in your children. That's how it will come out. So... You will see some things in your children that you like, You that's you. But you get mad at them because they acting like you, okay? They get into a relationship of marriage. They talking crazy. They calling, uh, they, they, uh, he calling his wife the B word or she calling him a no good punk and all these other kind of negative words and things like that. You get mad because you seeing this thing. I didn't raise you like that. 
you really did you you might not have said it at your mouth but you said it with your actions you no good dog i hear wife say that to their husband i'm like are you are you serious and the crazy thing about it is when i see wives talk to their uh husbands like that nine times out of ten they got a good husband they got a good husband. I'm not saying a perfect husband, but they got a good husband that is willing to get up, do for the family, grind, and all those types of things. And the crazy thing about it, I had a conversation with a beautiful young lady this weekend, beautiful woman of God. And we were talking about how she realized within herself that she had to separate herself from those who were negative. She just had to. It wasn't like, oh, I'm just going to go and cut you off. She had to separate herself from those who are negative. And we got to understand, people are in our life for a reason, season, or a lifetime. So everybody that are seasonal people, you can't keep them around for, my, for a lifetime because you're doing more damage to yourself. Again, you ain't got it. Oh, I'm just about to cut everybody off and I, I'm antisocial. I'm just going to be all about me. No, seek God and say, God, whose season is up in my life? And I'm not going to lie, when I've prayed that prayer, because you know how you um come around individuals and it's like they grieve your spirit is what they do. When you leave their presence, they are so negative. They always talk about what you should do. Oh, you should do this. You should do that. And it ain't like God laid, them, laid it on their heart to tell you that. But not only separating yourself from negative people, when it comes to your children, quit getting mad because I've seen this as well. Quit getting mad to where your children, they reflect a characteristic or behavior of their father or their mother. And you sitting up here dogging up to my, oh, you just like your no good mama. You just like your trifling daddy. Bottom line up front, if you ain't got nothing else out of what I said today, watch your words. Okay? Watch your words. Watch what you are speaking. I wish I would. I wish I would talk crazy to my kids, tell them they ain't going to be nothing or you going to be like your no good daddy or any of that kind of stuff. Even in the beginning when me and my husband were really going through in our marriage, I wish I would say some stuff like that. And see, this is why, come on parents, let me holler at you for a minute. You sit up here and say this ignorant stuff to your kids. But then you wonder, number one, why your kids don't want anything to do with you. Number two, why as soon as they get of legal age, baby, they out and they ain't looking back. They don't have a relationship with you or whatnot. And you may, I don't know, I poured everything I can into them and I don't know why they don't want a relationship with me. What are the words that you spoke to them? You spoke nothing but death over their life because, not because of what they were doing as a child, but because they act like your baby daddy or they act like your baby mama. They act like your ex-wife or they act like your ex husband or they acting like your dysfunctional wife or husband is right here in the marriage and you wonder why they don't want to be around you don't nobody want to be around dysfunction and so i commend you all before i get ready to go i commend you all who you have had this kind of foolishness in your life you have had this kind of brokenness in your life um, where individuals have spoken nothing but negativity over you. But instead of you taking that in, and I don't want you all to take it in if you're hearing this dysfunction in your marriage. What I encourage you to do is if you have a dysfunctional spouse, first examine yourself. Okay, that's what I encourage you to do. Number two, go get some help. Go get you some spiritual counseling. Go get you some counseling. Go get you some help. You know, it is out there everywhere. And then... Don't take that in. Do not take negativity in from anybody. Because even with the parents, and that's what I was going to say earlier, who be speaking all that negativity and that foolishness onto your children. You set up here and you do it to your children. But baby, let somebody else, let you walk up on your child and you witness somebody else bullying because that's what you're doing. You're not speaking like you're bullying your child. You watch somebody else do it. And see, then you're ready to act a fool. You ready to tear up some furniture. You ready to catch a case and go to jail. You ready to do all these things, but you do the same thing to the child in your home. Who am I talking to? I don't understand why people function in this way. So basically what you are doing, and God is allowing me to go to a deeper level of truth, and I thank him for it, and whatever he instructed me to do, y'all know I'm going to do it, and I'm going to say it. So basically what it is, is when you have these words towards your husband, when you have these words towards your children, you have these words towards your wife, all these negative words towards your co-worker, and all this other kind of stuff, baby, that's, that's dysfunction. Let me tell y'all what this is. It's dysfunction that resides within you as the individual. That's what it is. Now, 
I try to remain calm. I'm not saying I'm perfect. I try to remain positive. It took me a while to mature to this level. You hear me? Because I'm just going to be straight transparent. And it wasn't right. I used to be the one. Baby, you came for me. I cussed you out so tough. It didn't even make any sense. And I didn't even have any remorse for it. You hear me? But that's why I say maturity and wisdom kicks in. Because when you are mature... When you have wisdom, when you have healed from some dysfunction and some hurt within yourself and within your life, then you are to the place to where you are wise enough to know you don't have to use your words to cut people down. You are wise enough to know that you don't have to be cussing everybody and their mama out. Just because you have a disagreement with somebody, you wise enough to know. Now, I'm not going to lie. It took me a minute because I sit here, especially when somebody is coming from me. And I sit here and I just be like, God, I thank you. Like, this is what I'm thinking in my mind while I'm looking at him. While I'm fighting the urge of the old me. This is how it was in my transition phase. God, I thank you. Ooh, God, I thank you. Because you know if I was the old Shan, I've been a drug. I've been a pop them. And they, I bet, you know what I'm saying? But now, mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. No, no, it's not even worth it. So once you get your true healing... And I'm not talking about faking the funk and you masking like, oh, I'm happy now that wearing that fake mask. The mask going to fall off eventually. It's going to fall off. You're lying. You're covering down. You're pretending like everything is okay. It's going to come to a breaking point. And guess what? It's nobody else's fault but your own. So before you allow it to get to that point, why don't you go ahead, seek God. Pray and ask God to reveal to you what it is that need to change within you. What it is that is generational stuff that's on you that you're not even aware of that needs some healing. So that way you can stop talking nasty to everybody else and blaming everybody else and saying it's their fault. If we grown, grown adults, when are we going to start taking responsibility for our own actions? When are we going to start taking responsibility and maneuvering like mature, healed adults? You can't heal unless you deal with the real. Okay, so... That's what God placed in my heart for me to share with y'all on the day. You know, um, join us tonight. Marriage Mondays with the Kings at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time on KRG and 98.5 FM The Rock. I want to shout out. I'm wearing one of our sponsors shirt, Veteran Strong. So hope, honor, and um, uh, helping our patriots evolve is that they got veteran strong shirts it's got an arm breaking a chain i love it being a veteran if y'all want to know about how to get your own veteran strong shirt say you got a family member or um you have uh, uh somebody that you know you know used to serve in the military um or whatnot a friend and you want to bless them with a shirt it makes me feel empowered as a veteran wearing this shirt it does um where i used to hide a lot of things but just let, let us know you know what i'm saying go to our website contact us tap hit it up let us know hey where can i get that shirt or they got sweatshirts hoodies all kind of stuff and so that is our sponsor which is hope helping our patriots evolve but again join us tonight marriage mothers with kings 7 p.m central standard time on KRG 98.5 FM, The Rock, go to our website, click on the Listen Here tab. We will be talking about security in your marriage. Question of the week, why is it that couples... Oh, security in your marriage, everyone shouldn't have access. Question of the week, why is it that um, couples give people access to their marriage that mean them no good versus those who desire to see them succeed? So again, join us tonight. Hey, y'all, go ahead and have a blessed week. Don't let anybody steal your joy. Sure, this because it is free. Be a blessing to somebody this week and not a curse and you know your girl Shannon be back with you all next Monday for whatever it is God places on my heart so God bless you and blessings to you